Places in the world are seeing the explosion of God's power like the underground church in China is experiencing. And in the last 60 years, China's communist government has done its best to wipe Christianity off the map. What you are about to see is some of the rarest footage on the planet. In this church, the people wake up at 4.30 to come together for two hours to pray and worship. They do this every day. This church meets in the only place they are safe, a cave. This church meets on a farm, far away from prying eyes. Here's an example of an underground church outreach. The people sitting are Christians. The people who are standing are not. This particular preacher was once crippled, but was healed when someone prayed for her. She now preaches the good news of Jesus to anyone who will listen. In this particular meeting, over 1,000 people became Christians. Here Christians cast out demons from an 18-year-old girl. She's now a preacher. In Shanghai alone, there are over 3,000 house churches, just like this one. One thing Dennis pointed out to me was that most of the underground churches in China are actually led by young people. These kids have all come out of the communist system, and they want nothing to do with it. They only want to spread the love of Jesus to everybody they meet. This is a music school. Well, that's the cover anyway. It's really a training school for students who want to be pastors. The government thinks they're simply learning to play instruments. One thing I quickly realized about the Chinese church is that it's a lot different from the American one. For one thing, they think a four-hour sermon is short. In this church service, it's 120 degrees inside the building. The people meet for 12 hours straight. Few places. Christianity is growing in China under, underground at such a pace that they thought, they pre predicted that by 2030, that China would have 250 million Christians, making it the largest Christian nation on planet Earth. Now, I want you just to think about that for a second. What I see in China is a conservative values related to family, sexual identity, gender, uh, biblical masculinity. They don't accept they're not biblical, but it's very much like the biblical versions of these things. They are more and more conservative. Their concern is that, 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 that they don't want beta males in China. They want alpha males in China. So they hold to traditional values. Now, in that same country is this movement of conservatism that no one talks about, which is Christianity. At some point, it's going to bump heads with the, the power structure. But isn't it interesting that it turns out that the most conservative nation in the world in the next 30 years might end up being a Christian nation called China? I mean, that's mind-blowing, isn't it? It, it, it? it is amazing, and I have thought the same thing, that the Christian community might change that country. You know, I, I, I try to never go a week without leading somebody to Jesus. The easiest people to lead to the Lord are the Chinese.
the Chinese are the easiest. They are so accepting of this. I see them one day after another after another. The Chinese are coming to the Lord. If 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 I have Why a wet path or something, it's filled up with Chinese. Why do you think that is? Uh, uh, I don't know, but I'll give you a guess. Is that the Chinese tried to throw, throw God out of China? They tried to just say none of this, and God is saying, "Okay, I'll get you." And He's just reacting back because what God does is He says, "You want to throw my children in, in, into into the the Nile River? I'm going to drown your whole army in the yeah. Red Sea." I mean, yeah. I'm going to get you back in spades, and this yeah. is what God seems to do. He says, "You didn't give the, the the rest to the land. I'm going to put you in in Babylon for seventy years and give that land seventy years of rest. You didn't take care of the poor. I'm going to put you in Babylon where you are a a refugee and you're going to be poor. You 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 wanted I you wanted to worship idols. I'm going to put you in Babylon where there's more idols than any other place in the world." And so God is just saying, "You want to throw me out? I'm just going to give you Christians till it's coming out of your teeth." Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. China. Did you know there are underground groups in China that ride a train for 14 hours to gather together to worship God? Not only that, they sit down on wooden hard floors without air conditioning for days to worship together. On top of that, they memorize Bible verses from paper because they do not have enough Bibles to go around. And they do all of this in spite of getting arrested if they get caught doing so. Now let me take you to Luke 13 verses 29 and 30 where Jesus said the following. And people will come from all over the world, east and west, north and south, to take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, some who seem the least important now will be the greatest then, and some who are the greatest now will be the least important then. My friends, here in America, if we have to drive, more than an hour to go to church, we don't go. If we have to sit down for service for 45 minutes, we don't go. If we don't have an air conditioning and a nice chair, we don't go. We have free Bibles in the palm of our hands and we do not read them. Our friends, Jesus is reminding us today through this scripture in 2022 that we must revise our definition of what is great because as it stands right now, what we consider great is considered least important in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Peace out.